Quantum Technology Challenge is Army's means to rapidly identify the most valuable and disruptive applications of quantum technology. It's really important for the Australian Army to explore quantum technologies because of some of the unique advantages that it offers us. Quantum communications, quantum sensing, quantum computing. The nature of the technology is that it offers exponential increases in those areas. Quantum technology is difficult to really conceptualise because it's happening at the very atomic level. So what we're exploiting is the basic fundamentals of the way that material in nature interacts so that we can exploit those properties for our own advantage. So there's a total of 12 exhibitors here today. From the competition standpoint, Army will then award what are called exploit projects, which is to further develop to tech to the point where we can lock down the value of that technology and then also know the pathway forward. Every year this is a very exciting day for me because this is a day where quantum technology becomes real. We are seeing the emergence of quantum devices. Quantum is here. It's exciting, but we need to be prepared for the new challenges that are going to rise. A 6,000 qubit quantum computer is more than a million times better than the best large-scale classical computer. How do we ensure the quantum computer gives a trusted result? These devices, they're remotely accessible. So how do we make this type of architecture secure? So with our work uh, as a response to the quantum technology challenge, we developed a physical quantum puff based on intrinsic properties of today's quantum hardware. So the reason we got into this in the first place is because we're developing MQC, which is a modular full sweep quantum compiler. This will be an Australian sovereign capability so that we'll have full control of it going forward. And what we've been doing is developing mitigation strategies against crosstalk. And this requires deep expertise in quantum computing to characterize and mitigate this. The first thing we did was develop a simulator. This is world unique uh, research and it hasn't been done before. So users can simulate algorithms in the quantum computer, see the effect of crosstalk attacks and defenses. We have three real mitigation strategies that we show work on a small scale. How to safeguard quantum computing is a critical and also very challenging problem. Future quantum computers will use a lot of centralized cutting-edge equipment. They could become an easy target for attacks. How do we trust whether this algorithm will be executed correctly on a quantum computer or not? By verifiable quantum computation, we're able to ensure that those machine learning algorithm is verifiable and is checkable by even classical computers. So what we want to target deliver will be a fully automated software package. Even any end user of quantum programming without knowledge about the quantum verifications can rely on software to automate the whole process for them. When you do the quantum programming on your IDE, the tool, you can take our compiler. The compiler will generate all the verification code on the server and client side for you automatically on your behalf. And the code can run on both simulator on future cloud computer platforms. We believe that what we're exploring the technology has huge potential. But as all the technology, we need sufficient funding. So normally we do not get a lot of resources. So, so hopefully this will match with the interest with the army and generate positive uh, results to benefit them as well. It's been a really good opportunity to kind of see what everyone else is working on and kind of discuss what I'm working on. And I, I know that I'm going to leave with a lot of not just collaborations, but friends. It's going to be nice to be able to build on ideas discussed here and just maintain those relationships to work on projects that are really impactful and meaningful. I didn't realize quite how competitive it was. I've given a lot of presentations at conferences. I give a lot of lectures. I haven't sort of felt like, oh, I've got to be better than these other people. With the funding that we're hoping to win, we would actually turn those low hanging fruit into real things. So I, I sincerely hope that we, we win and we have that opportunity to do that. So what we're trying to do is weigh vehicles uh, using their 
gravitational fields. So currently, the Army uses traditional way bridges to measure their vehicles, but the issue with those is they can be quite inaccurate. It takes quite a long time to do the measurement. We're looking at the gravity that the vehicle would actually generate. What we have is the ability to apply sensors directly to a material through additive manufacturing processes. That material allows us then to sense changes in stress, strain, temperature and magnetic fields, which really opens us up to predict maintenance upon assets that we've never been able to before. The assets themselves are potentially quite high value, but of course there's the personnel element inside those assets as well. So having the confidence in the vehicle that you're driving to make sure that it, it still performs the same way prior to a particular mission. If you want to maximise the capacity of your vehicles, you need to know the mass that you've loaded on to as high an accuracy as possible. So the truck is producing its own gravitational field, so we want to stick a sensor into that field and measure it and build up a map of the field around the truck, and that will help us figure out what mass produced that field. The innovation that we're bringing to this problem is to use quantum sensors to do this. Over the past few months, we've been developing some software to do the data processing, which takes the field measurements and figures out what mass produced them. We have the material, we dope it with diamonds, and what we get actually, I will refer as a kind of super material. One of the characteristics that it gives us is the remote sensing possibility. That remote sensing actually allow you to do measurements in places that traditionally you wouldn't be able to do so. So we basically excite the subject with laser as well as the RF signal and measure the fluorescence. With more information, we would be able to do predictive maintenance and know where the failure happens, which means that our asset would be more available. It was a lot of fun pitching. A few months ago, this was a crazy idea, and we really didn't expect the Army to even be interested at all. But yeah, we came this far, and it feels pretty good. <laughs> For the Army, I think it would be a great opportunity because this is a technology which will have immediate results for them. We saw a challenge on the defense network and we decided why not just throw our hats in. We've been working away on our solution, mainly in our weekends and spare time. We developed an algorithm that can best use the noisy data coming in from a quantum sensor. So we've developed something that aims to make quantum sensors useful. So it's a brain that you can plug into any quantum sensor. It will automatically figure out how to extract maximum capability. If our model can reach the underlying signal, it can provide the best available tactical picture and situational awareness to Defence's most important asset, its personnel in an area of operation. As a consequence, we are hoping Defence will take this opportunity to assist us in allowing to push some boundaries in the simulation space and eventually allow us to transition this research into our production space. So what Autumn is, is it's effectively a brain for quantum sensors. It's like a Lego brick, you can attach it to your sensor, and this can help this hardware optimize its capability. Pitching in front of uh, this kind of audience was um, very eye-opening and something that I have not personally done before. Very good experience for us. It's been a big adjustment, but it's also very interesting and satisfying to kind of swim in these very different waters and learn a lot from all the different people here. Adapting to what the people I'm speaking to, they're interested in different things, they have knowledge in many different domains that I'm not used to speaking to. So I've enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, and I think it's very helpful to my growth and development. To make quantum technology real for you, to see that it's not science fiction or magic. I welcome you all to tour the stand, see the technology in person. You can experience and you can begin to understand what will be the impact of this technology on future land warfare, the way that Army operates and the way that Army equips itself. <laughs>